This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So apparently the um, thing on YouTube at the moment for uh, musicians that uh, grift on YouTube is to, to do a sort of confessional sort of video where we talk about a difficult subject and let people know that we got it tough. Um, so I wanted to do a video on the full cable method as it pertains to Helix and HX Stomp. So if I talk slower than normal, it's because I find this quite challenging to think about uh, I don't know if you do too, but full cable and that sort of stuff, each time I sort of try to set it up, it's a little bit of unfamiliar territory. So first of all, what is full cable method? So it's a way of making two devices that have an effects loop interact, uh, essentially. Um, so if we're talking about the Helix and uh, an amp with an effects loop, what we do is we plug one guitar into the Helix we then plug from the send of the helix into the front of the amp. Then we plug one cable from the send of the amp into the return of the helix. And then we plug the last cable from the return of the amp into the output of the helix. I think that's right. So four cables, guitar into helix send out of helix into front of amp from send of amp send into the return of helix from output of helix send into the return of the amp i think that's right so the the way that i found actually is a, a super useful aid for this is to actually label up your cable so i've got a um a little loom that was made up when i used uh the pod hd 500x and uh, my mate Paddy, you've seen him on that pedal show actually, uh, actually helped me to put together this loom. So I've got it labeled in on this side. So this is the amp side, send and return. And then on this side, I've got it labeled um, send, return and out. So in that way, I think this is really a, a very useful way to get your head around this or use kind of colored cables um, so let's just try and plug this stuff in. So as I say, we've got on the amp side, here's the input. So this is the green cable, right? So that needs to go into the send of the helix, doesn't it? So that goes into send one. Then on this side again, I've got the send of the amp. So the send of the amp needs to go to the and now I'm lost. Uh, the send of the amp needs to go to the return of the helix. Then I've got one last cable here, which will be the return of the Mac, uh, the return of the amp. It's so much easier if you do label these up, by the way. And then that goes into the output of the Helix. So I'll do that now. 
Okay, and now let's put this in front of the Helix and show you some things. Now, the first thing that you should notice if you've got this wired up correctly is that a normal preset should make sound. So essentially what you're doing here without doing anything else is bypassing the actual um, amp part of your amp, like the, the preamp, and you're essentially running this uh, as your Helix straight into Amplifier's effects loop, right? That's essentially what we're doing at the moment. Now, the place that I would start off if you're new to full cable, I think would be templates. And you can see template 2A is the full cable method. And this is, I think, quite a good way to set things up or see how it's done. So at the moment, we've got a Helix preamp being used. We want to run this about as high as we can, uh, I think. I don't think anything's going out into, so you're just gonna hear camera audio. Anything before this effects loop block should be going into your amp. Anything after should be in the loop of your amp. Now, that's one way to route it, but I think I've come up with a slightly better way, and I just wanted to show you that, um, given that this is the full helix. And then also what I wanna do is show you how to make any preset-ish um, helix ready, or effects ready. So what I'm doing is this. So this top line here goes into path 2A. We've got our effects loop here, effects loop one. That'll be our amp. And then this line here is what's gonna go back into the amp, okay? And in my case, I'm actually, because I'm gonna be recording, um, you can turn here, you can change this to be output quarter inch, so that would be these ones. You could change it to be XLR, or you can change it to be one of the sends. So I'm gonna use send three and four, and then in that way, I can keep my quarter inch outputs free so that I can use these to record with my interface. So hopefully you get direct audio there, um, as well as then the output here is the jacks, or it could be XLRs. So you wanna make sure that these are not multi, you wanna assign them properly. So in my case here, as I say, the output quarter inch is gonna have this cab on it, because I want, obviously, when I'm recording, there to be a cab, or this could go to front of house, if it was going to be XLRs, I'd set it to XLR or multi, like that. Um, that will work too. And so, let me just explain again. This stuff here will go before the amp. So this is with the amp on. Um, we're essentially going to go into here. Our effects loop is our amp. Effects loop one, as we've got it set up, is our amp. And we can put anything that we want to go before the amp up here. So I've got a screamer. Then anything post this block will be in the loop of the amp. Okay, so um, we got our, our delay here, if I was using reverb, I'd put that here. So anything that we don't want to be affected by the preamp gain, I would chuck post, if that makes sense. Um, especially if you're gonna be channel switching on your amp. So then I split off here, and because essentially I'm gonna be running this to front of house, potentially, or to my digital audio workstation of choice, Reaper, I've got a dual cab down here, so I've got a 1x12 US Deluxe. So if I turn this off, without this, front of house would be getting... ...spiky stuff. And so we want a cab sim on there, essentially. You can equally have an IR. What I might do as a sort of safety net is take this high cut down to about 4 kilohertz, so that for sure front of house isn't getting anything particularly spiky. So that's my kind of go-to four cable method. Anything you want before the amp can go here. You can bypass this, oh, not this. 
you could bypass the effects loop here if you want to take the preamp uh, the actual amp preamp out and you could put in um, helix models instead try that you try preamps you could equally try the the full fat models um, but I've got those assigned to this foot switch here if you want to try that now if you wanted to turn a normal preset into something that's full cable ready what I'm thinking is how would I do this so this is a bit of a complicated preset so what I would first do is take these out so take out your amps because I'm presuming if you're going full cable in general you're going to be wanting to use your actual amp so in this case now we're going to put in our effects loop so effects loop one that should give us our amp right so now we should have our amp now what else am I going to do here I think I'm going to move this stuff up to here if I can. Let me just action, copy block, action, paste block, action, then move that down like this. Right, then clear this block, action, clear block. I'm going to do that, action, copy block, action, paste block, action, clear block, action, copy block, action, paste block. Action, clear block. Action, copy block. Action, paste block. Action, clear block. Right, now, searchlights, I'm just gonna clear that all together. Now, as I say, anything that we want to come after the amp in the effects loop, we need to put to here. And then this path goes down to 2A. And then down on this block, uh, we want, if this goes here, a reverb at the end, and then I'm going to put a cab block down at the bottom. Dual will be fine. Let's just go with something nice and easy. Move that down, and then that needs to come down as well. So this cab block is going to go to our quarter inch outputs. This output here is going to go to our send three and four. I think, hopefully, that should get us the desired result. There's my amp. And I can change to the drive channel without affecting the stuff that's happening in the loop. The other thing that I've done is, you hear that there was clipping there, Instead, because we've got this output here, what we can do is turn down this level to compensate because we want to keep this pretty high. I think unity gain-ish, um, if not full. We can take this level here down and then hopefully we can... <laughs> So, if I save this as Chase Bliss, this would be what I use in the introduction, save. Okay, so that's how you could convert a fairly complicated Helix preset. So what we've got here, stuff before the amp, things we want in the effects loop, we're going to put joining after the effects loop. This is after as well. And then at the end, we're going to split off so that to our recording device or front of house, we can add a cab. And then this one here goes to, I'm using this one, going out via send three. You could do that out via the quarter inches if you're going to use the XLR here too. But just, you know, think about things. The other thing to bear in mind, global settings, the preferences of our ins and outs. We've actually got levels that we can set for each of these bits and pieces. Um, so... You could set these to line output, XLR output, instrument, instrument, instrument. So 
I guess your starting point, you'd maybe want to be line for most of this stuff. That should be a bit quieter. <laughs> You can control each of these individually so maybe if you wanted a, a pad on your um, send you could turn this one down so hopefully but just bear in mind depending on your effects loop in your amp you may want to experiment with this page um, there might be something useful in the manual about that but yeah, let me just switch over to the HX Stomp and show you if I do anything differently there. So here, our guitar goes into our input on the HX Stomp. Um, then we need to plug our send in. So that'll be over this side, right? Send here. And then our return is just here. And then our output is here. If we also wanted to send to front of house, I think, I don't know if that's going to be possible on the HX Stomp. Uh, I might have to think about that a bit more. So we got that working. Um, if I change this one here, what I need to change this to is our effects loop. Send return mono, effects loop, left. And I don't want that there. Um, bypass that for now so that should be what we want very strange right so let's start again so if we take this one out to so clear this block and replace it with our effects loop or well, maybe that's the issue uh, if we take this one down to path B but move it across And then that one we can change onto path B. The output of that can be send left or right. Right, okay, that's the problem. We can't do both the effects loop and also send back out of here. So with the HX Stomp, you can only really run it in full cable method and then not send to front of house. Is that correct? I might be totally wrong about that, but um, let me know in the comments if I am. I'll try and correct that if that is the case but we just put in our effects loop send return mono effects loop left and right and then we've got our amp here i guess you could use your headphone output if you wanted to send that to desk maybe i'll catch you in another video soon the difficult topic of the uh, full cable method hopefully that helps a couple of you maybe um something that is a little bit complicated but i think labeling up your cables beforehand is a really good way to uh, make things a bit easier on yourself cheers for now